Okay traders, I'm done trading for the day. I want to talk today about uh, market direction and how it can help you trade. Just before that, here's a quick look at my PL today. As you can see, I'm up uh, $4,600 today. I had uh, three winning trades, uh, two trades in BA, one in Billy, and one loser in Sono, which actually worked out fine later, but without me. So I'm going to finish in green today, but what I do want to talk about is market direction, and we're going to go through this. Uh, today in the Star Trader course in, uh, in, in, a, in a way that is going to be, you know, we're going to talk much more about it, but just uh, a preview of what we're going to learn today in the Star Trader course. I want you to take a look at the S&P 500 in five minute candles. It's right here on the left top side and on the bottom you can see the QQQ, uh, which is also extremely important. The most important indice is the S&P 500 because it represents what the institutional traders are doing, whether they're buying or selling. I will explain more about this today in the Star Trader course. But what I do want you to realize is that there are some points where reversals are expected when you're trading the S&P 500. You can see that the first reversal was after 10 minutes as expected. Second reversal was exactly after 30 minutes as expected. And at that point when the market, the S&P 500 moved higher, there could be two, two things could happen here. One, it could have continued higher. Second, it could have come down. Sometimes the Nasdaq is like a pre-warning or a crystal ball to what is about to happen to the S&P. And it did happen today because at the point where the S&P was pulling back up, Nasdaq continued to come down. And as you can see, it continues right now to a new low. So if you watch the Nasdaq, you can possibly get some kind of an understanding about what the S&P is about to do. Now, why am I talking so much about uh, the S&P and the Nasdaq? Because every stock that you trade that has more than 1 million shares volume and over $10, 60% of the movement of the stock that you're trading comes from the S&P 500. 60% of the movement. So if you want to have a trade, for example, like Boeing, take a look at Boeing. Boeing moved up with the S&P 500. See that move up over here was exactly the move up that Boeing experienced. Now Boeing is weak. It's supposed to be downtrending. I look at the Nasdaq and I can see that the Nasdaq is coming down. I look at the S&P. This looks to me like a potential reversal uh, where it should continue coming down again because of the Nasdaq, because the Nasdaq again is some kind of pre-warning to what is about to happen to the S&P. S&P is important. Nasdaq is important as a pre-warning, but it's not really uh, the indice that you should make your decisions according to. Although you can definitely use it. So at that point, when I saw the S&P starting to come down, I shorted Boeing. Again, Boeing is weak, is trending lower. It all starts with a stock that you pick and has a nice technical formation and you expect it to continue with the trend, but then you use the S&P 500 to make the final decision. Same happened with Billy. Billy is relatively weak. You look for the point where Billy moves up. These are five minute candles and then starts to come down. You look at the S&P 500, which starts to come down because the Nasdaq helped it coming down and because it was really trending lower today. And then you make the decision. As you uh, probably seen, I had uh, two trades today, one in Boeing, one I started my day with two trades, one in Boeing and one in Sono. And I was a little bit on the red side because my loser in Sono was uh, bigger, slightly bigger than my winner in Boeing, in BA. So... I was, you know, I took my time. I was waiting for the right opportunity to get into two more trades. So I was watching the S&P 500. I was expecting the S&P 500 to reverse at that point, helped by the trend, helped by the Nasdaq. And I knew that it is very, very likely that the stock that is already trending lower, like Boeing or Billy is likely to follow the S&P. And again, as I mentioned earlier, 60% of the stock that you're uh, trading, 60% uh, of the movement comes from the S&P 500. So if you have a nice technical formation, the technical formation says, well, you've got like a 60% chance to succeed without looking at the S&P. If you look at the S&P, you probably have more than 70%. That's what we do. We just, you know, we just watch the stock, uh, make a decision based on the trend of the stock that you're trading, nice technical formation, but in order to jump higher percentage, I mean, if you, again, just 
watching the trend, maybe you've got 60% chance to succeed. If you're watching the trend of the S&P 500 and the reversal points of the S&P 500, and you look at the NASDAQ to get some kind of a pre-warning idea of what is about to happen to the S&P, then you just go over 70%. You just, you know, it's extremely hard to succeed more than 70% of the time. So this is considered to be very good. Nobody succeeds in 100% of uh, his trades. But uh, anyway, it's... It was a helpful tool. You know, just sit on the side, watch the market, <coughs> watch the stock you're trading. You've got something, nail it. And as you saw, I was at the same time moving into two trades based on market direction. We're going to talk much more about it today in the Star Trader course because I don't think what I just told you is enough. I think you should know more and uh, we're going to discuss that. So that's it for me for today. I wish you all the best and I'll see you later today in the Star Trader course and uh, of course tomorrow in the trading room. Bye traders.